Good morning. Good morning. Today we'll be looking at the fourth Sunday in Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Sunday is from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 10. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love for which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel is from St. John chapter 3. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we all know um, that there is, especially us men, that there is something called selective hearing. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know all about that selective hearing. But did, did you know there's also something called selective vision? Yes, I learned that yesterday from you. <laughs> yes. So um, the past couple of years, there's been a video going around on the Internet uh, um, Basically, what it does is it sets two teams up, a team with white shirts and a team with black shirts, and they're tossing the ball back and forth to each other, and they're moving around while they're passing this ball. And so, as I did it the first time, and you did too, we kept our eyes right on the ball, right? And my wife did too. She, she didn't did. see it either. She didn't see it either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there were some things that were going on. Uh-huh. Yes. Not really behind the scenes. Right in front of right us. Right in front of us. That we didn't see. That we didn't see. 
and that is that uh, there's a gorilla that stands in the middle of the of the uh, of the passing of the ball, and then a couple of the players leave, and then the the curtain changes in the back, and the gorilla kind of goes like this, and you never see it because you're focused on the ball. Right, they're so focused on the ball that they're blind to the gorilla, so to speak. And apparently it happens to 50% of 50% people percent of watch us. it. Yeah. So the question that I'm going to pose on Sunday is what are we focusing on? You know, what is our focus on? We see with the children of Israel in the Old Testament that they were focusing on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. God had provided for them everything, really. He brought them out of slavery, took them through the Red Sea waters, drowned their enemies, took them into the wilderness, and then provided them with this with this wonderful food uh, called manna, which means, what is this? And they complained, and they moaned, and they uh, cried out against uh, to Moses, saying, why have you brought us out of Egypt into this wilderness? If only we had stayed there for a bit, everything would have been good. So God wanted them to help them to see again. They had really selective vision. They weren't looking at what they needed to look to, namely to God for all that was good and, and right in their lives. And so God had them set up a, a bronze serpent on, on a pole. And that when they, if they were bit by these venomous snakes, they would look to that pole, look to that serpent, and, and they, would, they, would, they would live. So God brought their focus back to him. He really literally called them back to repentance, to the forgiveness of sins. Um, Nicodemus knew also uh, where his eyes were to be focused on. He talked to Jesus that night, and, and Jesus really set him straight. Um, if you remember the conversation that uh, Jesus had with Nicodemus uh, was about um, how could a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into his, mother womb, his mother's womb a second time? And, and Jesus said to him, uh, no, unless one is born of water and the spirit, one can enter the kingdom of, uh, of God. And then he, again, took them and told them about this, this story of, uh, from Numbers chapter 6. Of, um, and then he says, makes this incredible statement, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I don't know if you've noticed, I know you have, Pastor Mac, um, but those of you viewers, that the gradual for Lent uh, for six weeks, it's the same thing. And it simply is this. O come, let us fix our eyes upon Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. It's so easy in this world to get distracted by all sorts of other things instead of focusing on Jesus, so to speak, the gorilla, who's right before our very eyes, giving us and providing us with his good gifts and his spirit. Um, so those are some of the thoughts that kick around to talk about with selective vision and keeping our eyes on the there's there's something main that jumped, things yeah that jumped out to me is um where the israelites are complaining there's no food and no water and we loathe this worthless food and um they're speaking of the manna that's coming from he heaven that god is miraculously providing for them for them and they don't they don't see how great this is right and I think when you look at the host at, at the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. and you can look at the host and not see what he's really giving us, kind of like, you know, in that video, you get focused on something else and you don't see the elephant in the room or the, the, gorilla. the, the gorilla in the room. Um, and uh, for us, you know, what is it? What is this? Um, the only way you see it is through your ears. It's through the word of God. And it's kind of like when I watch that video, you know, they, they rewind it and then show you. And I, I'm like, I didn't trust them. So I went to the very beginning. Well, actually, when you watched Dar it again, I yeah. watched it again when Darlene watched it. And I saw I was looking. You, I was looking you knew for the gorilla. Was there. Yeah. So I knew it was there and it was actually there. I'm like, huh. And she's watching it and she didn't see it because she was focused on something else. Well, in our lives, we get focused on other things, don't right. we? Instead of um, uh, the Christ and Jesus, and it's in Him as we look to Him. There's life. There's no life in the you know the the other quote things that end up worthless without Christ. Um, in Christ, they're all they're all benefits to us, right? But so the this bread, this the 
it, it, this bread is the body of Christ, and, and we're given to know that, to, to look at it, and to see it. And it's not worthless. It's It's got uh, um, all of the blessings of heaven and self, it, itself in it, because our, it's our Lord's body, and, and he, he puts it puts himself with us and all of the blessings of heaven, forgiveness, life, peace, his goodness. So I, I, that just jumped out at me with mm. what you were, were saying, you know, so they don't see it. Um, and often we don't either. So we neglect, you know, being faithful and receiving the gifts because um, we're focused on other things um, or don't think it's that great. But when um, um, I tell you, when the Israelites were um, dying of the, you know, the, the poison uh, from the snakes, and they were given to see where their, their salvation was found ultimately and what God had attached to it, a promise here. And that's what he promises through the Lord's Supper, forgiveness, life, and peace. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's, that's good pretty, stuff. You could go a lot of ways I know. in this sermon. Um, it, it, and the little gem from Dr. Scare in his one of his sermons that he had here, um, thinking how central, how important the crucifix is in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't have one in your home, I'd encourage you to get one to help you to focus on what Christ has done for us. And there's a hymn, um, a, f- a line from a familiar hymn. It goes like this. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. The cross is the simple message of my sin against God and his redeeming me in Jesus. Um, it's a constant reminder to us where our focus is to be on on Christ and him crucified and what he's done for us. So it's a beautiful symbol for us to focus on, yeah. not only during Lent, but every day of our lives. Yeah, and the crucifix has the body of Christ, right? Yeah. So then you see, you know, that the body of Christ is among us, uh, right below it mm-hmm. in the Lord's. There it is. Uh, in the bread and wine, the body and blood of Holy Communion. I think that a couple of years ago, you took a picture of that with, you had the chalice. I still have that picture. Yeah. It's a pretty, I have it. Picture. Yeah. I, I it got, looks like I'll the, probably post it, it next like week. the body again. of Jesus is in the, yeah, it looks which like he's in, he's yeah. in the chalice. He's in the yeah. chalice, which yeah. he is. Yeah. Um, great. So the hymn, uh, the hymn of the day for Sunday is hymn 571, uh, God so loved the world that he gave. And I thought we would do, um, how about, one, two, and three. Good. Let's do that. God loved the world so that he gave his only son, the lost, to save, that all who would in him believe should everlasting life receive. Christ Jesus is the ground of faith who was made flesh and suffered death. All then who trust in him alone are built on this chief cornerstone. God would not have the sinner die. His Son with saving grace is nigh. His Spirit in the Word declares how we in Christ are heaven's heirs. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. See you Sunday.